All right. Well, what happens with trust? Well, when you have a trust involved and you're going through and looking at the beneficial ownership test, which is looking for 25% or more of the entity being owned by a particular person, there are five things that we look at. There are five tests. These are non-exhaustive. So if somehow you know they didn't come up with all the right rules, they are being broad. They do want to see who gets swept in. But there are five rules that they've give us, given us explicitly that will sweep somebody in. First, the trustee of a trust or any other individual who has the authority to dispose of assets for that trust. Now, a few things on that. A trustee or other individual, this is going to sweep in executors, administrators, personal representatives. These are folks who stand in a fiduciary capacity just like a trustee. They own something for the benefit of somebody else. Now, they're probably going to have the authority to dispose of the asset. That, to me, means both selling the asset as well as they have the ability to distribute it out to somebody else. Okay. The smell test I think about on corporate transparency, could Uncle Alphonse, the narco-trafficking terrorist, potentially use this structure to hide away his ownership or rights to the entity? So if he were to set up a trust where he doesn't have his name on it, but the trustee does, and that trustee could, or he's the trustee, and he can give it wherever he wants, that's what they're looking for. Test two. These next two tests, so test two and three, address beneficiaries under trusts. So a beneficiary who is the sole permissible recipient of income or principal from the trust is one test. And a beneficiary who has the right to demand a distribution or withdraw substantially all of the assets from the trust. Now, again, first, the sole permissible income and principal beneficiary, if they're the only person who's getting anything from that trust, they need to be reported. If it's only income or if it's only principal, I'd still say that's what you're looking for. Remember that marital trusts are qualified terminal in interest property trusts for estate tax planning. Those have single beneficiaries, which would mean that the surviving spouse of a Q-tip trust should be treated as this beneficiary. For gifting trusts, we're going to think about demanding distributions or withdrawing assets when you have something like a lifetime power of appointment or crummy withdrawal rights, I would also consider that as something that may trigger ownership. Now, it doesn't mean you're triggering all of the ownership. It doesn't. It just means what does that trust own? If it just has a 1% interest and that's the only thing that the beneficiary has, that may be the end of it. You know, if they don't have any other interests in this business, that's probably where we're stopping. But if they're close, if they're 24, 25%, then they can have that all appointed to them. Finally, the tests four and five get to the grantors of the trust. So grant, trust grantor, set law, trust or, depending on your jurisdiction, where you live. Trust grantor has two ways that they can be treated as a beneficial owner. First, if they have the right to revoke the trust, again, they've put it in trust, but they can always bring it right back to them. That's going to cause any interest in that trust to be assigned to them for purposes of the ownership interest test. And second, grantors who have a right to withdraw all the assets of the trust. Thinking about estate planning again, a grantor who has a swap power, the ability to swap assets in and out of the trust, which is something we do for income tax planning, this I think would trigger that. So when you're thinking about trusts, we've got five rules that we think about to potentially trigger ownership under the ownership trust for Corporate Transparency Act purposes. One, for trustee, it's a trustee or an other individual who has the authority to dispose of trust assets. Two, beneficiaries who are the sole permissible recipient of income in principle. Three, beneficiary who, ha who has the right to demand uh, a distribution of or withdraw all of the assets from the trust, substantially all of the assets of the trust. Four, a grantor who has the right to revoke the trust. And five, a grantor who has the right to withdraw or otherwise obtain the assets of the trust. And that's for the beneficial ownership interest test only. We didn't talk about the substantial control test because if there's a trust, you're going to look at everybody who has substantial control over the entity. Who can, when we think about that reporting company, who has substantial control over it, whether it's in a trust or out. So you may have a beneficiary who only has 1% in the trust, 
but might have substantial control through some other rights. Again, you're going to be looking at the entire trust.